So a woman asked a question in the comment section and I decided to put it to y'all. She says, um, maybe a bit off topic, but I really need some positive or reasonable feedback. I have a best friend who keeps sending me back to my past by relaying messages from a guy I used to talk to. We were old friends from elementary. Me and this guy dated as kids and just hooked up as adults. I have him blocked on everything. And the only way he's able to contact me is through my best friend. I asked her if she would block him as well for me so I could move on from my past. But she just won't do it. I've been feeling like since she won't block him, then maybe I need to do away with her as well and cut them both completely out my life. Am I the a-hole? And then I was like, this is a good question. I'll ask it today. Now, Leela answered in the comment section. She said she doesn't need to block him, but she does need to stop sharing what he's saying to you. It's so messed up. You have to, um, it's so messed up to keep passing messages to you when you've told her you're not interested. She sounds like she likes to trigger you in some way and cross boundaries. If she won't listen to your request to respect your boundaries, then she isn't respecting you and she isn't a true friend. I'm sorry that she's not listening to you. Leela came in, swooped in, gave some great feedback that I believe kind of drops the mic. And I'm going to leave it at that because that's some good stuff right there. But you guys go ahead and chime in and let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. This is another edition of Men Keeping Other Men Single. This is in the True Off My Trust subreddit. He says, I've only just realized that I let the men I call my family and friends ruin my marriage. He says, I've been divorced for almost two years. And a few weeks ago, my father, my two brothers, and my four friends, while very drunk, joked about how they can't believe I left my wife. They said they all tried to get with her since the divorce, but she had repeatedly rejected them, saying it would be inappropriate and unkind to do such a thing to me. I laughed at what they were saying just to ease them into saying more. And once they thought I found it funny, they really opened up. They had all purposely made me feel paranoid about my ex-wife cheating on me and using me because why would a woman like her be with a man like me if it wasn't for the money I made? They often hinted at or sometimes even directly said that she wore the pants in the relationship and that she was only with me because I'm easily manipulated. They constantly planted negative things into my mind. If I went to talk with them about something happening in my relationship, they would put a negative twist to it or they'd purposely give me bad advice. Then when I lost my job during COVID, they all hinted at how she's definitely cheating and there's no financial benefit in being faithful to me. I obviously trusted them and often took their words to heart and it ruined my marriage. I frequently argued with my wife and I was always accusing her of something or suspecting her of not really loving me. I questioned everything between us. I often told her BS things like how I'm a high value man and that she needed to appreciate me and when I was not working for six months, I flipped the script and started accusing her of not respecting me for not working. I was unappreciative of all her hard work and for being the one who took care of our household bills and any other bill during those six months of unemployment. I continued to let their, their words drive me into paranoia, and I started accusing her of cheating with her coworkers. Eventually, my wife had enough of my moods, constant mistrust, and accusations. She left me, and to be honest, for a long time, it felt like it came out of nowhere. So I had, uh, myself, I had myself convinced she left me for another man. Now, here I am, knowing that every man I've called my family, my friends, were all my enemies who I let destroy my marriage. I obviously lost my mind once they were done telling me all the ways they conspired to ruin my marriage. And we did get to blows. I've cut all um, contact with each and every one of them. I want to reach out to my ex and make amends and hopefully get her back. My ex-wife has agreed to meet up with me and she doesn't know exactly what I want to discuss with her. And I don't know how to go about making amends and hopefully mending our relationship. How do I tell her how much I regret everything and that I want her to give me a second chance? Is there even a chance for us? Get it. Some of y'all keep saying you took the words of your friends over your wife's and I don't think that's a fair or complete assessment. I trusted my father and brothers. My father 
was the main driving force behind this manipulation campaign. And it's not often that your entire family is conspiring against you and not only your family, but also your friends. I'm not running away from accepting the fact that it is wholly my fault and how my marriage ended. I take ownership of that. I take ownership of the fact that I accused my wife of being a cheater or a user. I regret it all. If my wife doesn't accept my apology, I would accept it gracefully. If she says she never wanted to talk to me or ever get back together, I'd also accept it. I would not stand in the way and I would not try to change her mind. I, I will wish her well and leave her be. I am perfectly aware. I am aware, aware that a lot of these reddits might not be real, but I believe that this red pill, manosphere, all of this stuff, these talking points are doing things like this to these people. The fact that so many keep talking about high value and how women are just using the men, it comes across just like this. And men are working themselves into that crisis of loneliness. They already don't have very many friends. That is, um, and then as they age, a lot of people are moving away from them. A lot of parents are getting kids that go no contact with them. And so the red pill is just going right along. <laughs> it's going right along with it. All that Kevin Samuel said, and, um, the women are just good for, you know, fertility and to use the use us for SEX. It's all coming to life right in front of our eyes. So even if this isn't 100% real, I believe that these situations do have happen. Let's look at some of the comments. Okay, so Jess says, so you're telling me that your dad and brothers also try to get with your wife. And then Island Lore says, I'm shocked that they're still alive after a confession like that. I don't know, man, Bahamians just too volatile to hear something like that and not go off. That's just wild. And then the OP chimes in with, I didn't include the violence that broke out once I heard it all because I didn't want to get my post banned. Blood was absolutely spilled. And of course, I had my butt beat because it was seven against one. But I did do damage and an ambulance and police were called. None of us pressed charges against each other and left it at that. Honestly, I am still raging and I've been heartbroken since. What pieces of sh are these family members and friends? Wasn't enough that they effed up your life. They ganged up on you instead of being apologetic as F E S and de escalating. Shaking my head. I know you can't go John Wick on their butts, but is there any legal framework for defamation um, for a defamation lawsuit you could start on your behalf of your um on behalf of your wife against all of them? And the OP says, I've decided I wasn't gonna let these people steal one more second of my time. I don't think there's much I can do legally. And even if there is a legal framework for it, I wouldn't even waste my time on it. So the moral of this story, sometimes the people that you think are your friends are really your ops. So y'all go ahead and chime in on this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So this man's post was reposted in the Nice Guy subreddit. He says, dating in Boise for single men is horrific and painstaking here. Effort not paying off. Okay. So he says, I'm 31 and moved back to Boise in January 2021 after living in SoCal for 18 years. And for the life of me, I haven't been able to find even a halfway decent or a halfway decently attractive girl to connect with the whole time I've lived here. I used to put not even a quarter of the effort into finding and connecting to straight up beautiful women down in California. And I'd easily have a circle of women I'd be dating in a rotation every other day of the week. It takes me about one to two, maybe three weeks to find a cute girl to connect with down there and it go from there. But here it's been almost three years. I, I'm a good looking, attractive and charming guy and know how to be a gentleman. So far, it seems like there's hardly any opportunity to meet women here. And when there is, I find them, um, and when there is, and I find them even a little bit attractive, they've either been one, married since they were 21, two, married and divorced, but have several kids with dad upset and annoyingly in the picture, three, single, but have three to four kids each with a different baby daddy who are either in prison 
and obsessive or free and stalking or obsessive or four are single but are literally talking to 10 other guys all of which were her exes exes best friends homies trying to play we're friends card but all of them are trying to control her and get in her pants and she cares about them way too much oh, there's i also see straight dime pieces nine times out of ten with straight chumpy ass dudes below average men around here i see that in california sometimes too but not like here here they're usually married to them i've had a nice apartment in downtown and when i wasn't in downtown i at least had my own nice place and had a good job and been able to provide treat women with respect and know how to be smooth women are so flighty here and will give me their numbers here after it seems like we had a good initial connection but i swear just about every time i follow up with them afterwards in the right way i just about always get ghosted like why even give me your number and make it seem like you're interested um tell me to hit you up and then the next day or two and then just ignore me completely and pretend like you didn't just get my text Ugh. I tried meetup groups, online, bars, not bars, green belt, school, looked for it, not looked for it, approaching women smoothly, non-invasively on the sidewalk during the day. Haven't tried the gym pickup yet. I don't really want to interrupt someone's workout and ask them to pull their headphones out just to talk to me at the gym. Just doesn't seem smooth. I've, of course, considered maybe I'm the problem and have worked on myself and put effort into carefully analyzing the way I've done things, changed things up, gotten my female friends and family and I'm back in Callie's opinion and made changes accordingly. I mean, everything I am, um, I mean, everything. And I'm so frustrated and fed up with the women and the dating scene here. And I am truly, I am truly at a loss and thought I would express this in a Reddit, in a Reddit post to gain some insight criticism insults i don't give a f whatever it takes do any other men or women share my pain here or experience in boise wouldn't say i'm lonely per se but i've been single for over three years now worked hard on myself and i am desiring a real connection to share with a woman that's a normal human being trait to have please lay it on me so over here he was letting us know that he had women in a rotation just like he could put it on them you know it only took a little bit of effort but then he seems to get upset he gets upset with these women when they are dime pieces and they're going for somebody that he perceives as chunky and below average so maybe it's his thinking that's what i'm thinking but some of the comments because like i said this was reposted in the nice guys subreddit um, this person says, approaching women non-invasively on the sidewalk. That's all the info I needed. And then someone says, but he's so smooth. The line you quoted jumped out at me also. I'd even say the fact that woman gave him numbers then ghosted was because he was overbearing, almost threatening. It was a way to shut him up and get rid of him in that moment. Um, then he, this person says, but he followed up in the right way. Why would they ghost him? This person at the bottom says, he's so smooth that aviation fans like myself gave him the nickname F-35, as in stealth fighter. <laughs> but look at the name underneath his name, um, Captain, whatever this is. It says, sex is the prize I deserve for being nice. That is hilarious. Anyways, I'm not going to hammer it home because obviously no people were here giving him any instructions or any advice because this was reposted in the nice guy subreddit but let me know what jumped out to you okay so this woman posted in the 2x chromosome subreddit she says after 19 years i'm officially single again i don't want to be angry but i am she says 37 um, year old woman ex-husband this is the first time saying that out for a divorce one day after our 13-year wedding anniversary and not even five weeks later we had our court hearing he kept calling the judge's office every day for a court date so i think they just did it fast to shut him up we had filled out the paperwork not too long prior but he said he wanted to give it another go that didn't last long he changed got mad when i didn't change with him 
I'm not going into the whole thing again, but man, I am still angry. He wanted the divorce in the first place. He also wanted to make it work, but he also didn't want to try anything other than me changing. I had asked him not to sleep with other people until we were officially divorced. And goddamn, he just, um, he, did he just bother the judge until we got a date? He called me frantically the other day saying that they could do it in 20 minutes over Zoom. So I had 20 minutes to put myself together and that was it. I'm in the process of changing my name back to my real name again. I feel calmer, but I keep going through bouts of anger. He moved out. We are going to sell the house and I have to find a new place to live. Part of me wishes nothing but peace for him, but the other part of me hopes he gets struck, struck by lightning. <laughs> okay. He went away for a yoga teacher training for six weeks and came back a different person who suddenly decided we were too different. He says there was no cheating, but I do not believe him at all. Oh, well, I am divorced. I never thought I would say that ever. I thought we were going to be together forever. This is one of the main reasons why I say that women have got to decenter men. Even when you're married, even when you've been married for a long time, because when things change, you may fall apart. Some people will fall apart if their job lets them go, if somebody leaves them, if they lose something. Some people who have centered other things other than themselves will lose themselves. They will completely crumble. And that is the reason why, yes, you got to have relationships. Sometimes relationships come and go. It happens. Sometimes relationships don't make it forever. It, it just happens, but you don't want to lose yourself completely. Um, this woman, I don't know what happened. She doesn't go into it. She's obviously angry. She's going to have to decompress some things. It's going to be a time frame to get over something like this, but hopefully she will. Um, I just want us all to remember that sometimes relationships end, but you don't want your life to crumble simply because your relationship ends. This person says, oh, wow, you've been with him since you were 18 and you're 37 now. I have a feeling this is going to be like a whole new life for you. In a couple of decades, you'll be able to say with a wealth of wisdom that you're someone who has lived two entirely separate and different lives in one. Everything is going to change. I say embrace it. Say yes to things you wouldn't usually say yes to. Pick up hobbies you've thought about but pushed out of your mind because you've been too busy doing wife wifey things. Exactly. Like, 37 is not old. 37, she has the opportunity to go and do so much. I'm 43 now and I still like feel like I have tons of time to do things. So do it. This person says, I love this advice. Um, the next person says, in a similar situation, good advice. Thanks. This person says, the best revenge is a life well lived, heal, move on, and thrive. I don't necessarily know if revenge is the best thing. Revenge, why are you going to get back at somebody? Just live. Be happy. Move on. Relationships do end. Um, this person says, six weeks of yoga training doesn't suddenly make you want a speedy divorce. Sounds like you're free to build a new life for yourself. I wish you all the best. This person said maybe his yoga teacher made him want a speedy divorce. Uh, this person says, I'm so sorry you've been hurt. Take a year to grieve and don't jump into any relationships or make any other big life changes right away. Find yourself, love yourself, dive into your own health and hobbies, and devote time and energy into friendships. I hope you have a support network to feel comforted and um, people to check in on you regularly. You will be okay. Find the joys in life. Have some fun. Hugs to you. Absolutely. This is, life happens. This is part of life. Heal and then move forward. This person says, "Hun, 37 is such a good age to be single. You know who you are. You understand the world more. You know what it uh, makes a good partner and you don't have to settle because you know how to take care of yourself. And you still have so many years ahead of you and so many paths to a happy, fulfilling life. This is going to be the first stage of something awesome. Good luck. And this person, I needed to hear that. And we all need to hear that. Third, when people start acting like 30, it's just the end of everything and you're so old. 
trust me, you're not. If you take care of yourself, if you have hobbies, if you eat well, if you have good friends, you will be fine into your 30s and 40s. Anyways, go ahead, jump into the post. I want women to hear this. I know it was a breakup, but I want us to be encouraged, encourage, um, encourage others. Jump in, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.